Honor to introduce uh, Vera Franz, uh, whose work, our, our, our group would have probably disappeared off the face of the earth a long time ago if it wasn't for her efforts and support. And I would say the most important person uh, in the world, not to mention the foundation world. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you very much, Jamie, for the kind introduction. And um, also thanks to Jamie for reminding, giving us a reality check. and reminding us all that this is not a theoretical exercise, uh, but actually we are fighting for very, very important causes here. Um, I want to briefly talk a little bit about OSF, the Open Society Foundations, my employer, and the foundation world. So OSF has started, this should not be up there yet, <laughs> but anyhow, it doesn't matter. Um, the Open Society Foundations uh, started working in this field 10 years ago, so I think Joe Karganis is right to, you know, point out that we are um, here to celebrate an anniversary as well. We started, OSF helped to launch the Budapest Open Access Initiative in 2002. We've started our work on copyright reform in 2003, and we've started our Access to Medicines program in 2007. Uh, I'm not doing this on my own, so my dear colleague, some, uh, that dear colleague Melissa Hegeman is leading our open access work. Um, my equally dear colleague Els Torrelli, who I'm sure many of you know as well, is leading our access to medicines effort. So we really have, as a team within the foundation, advanced this work. And we did not have the support uh, initially, and we, um, uh, especially from senior leadership, so we have over these years had lots of internal struggles to keep this work going. But I think what I would say is that luckily, we were very lucky that uh, my foundation provides spaces for experimentation and allows for dissenting opinions within the foundation, and that was the only reason we could continue that work. So we had to go back to boards many times and argue our case and I want to also thank many of you here who helped us argue that case internally with the foundation. That was incredibly important. Uh, luckily, we're in a better place now. Um, so we last presented to the global board of the Open Society Foundations in July 2011. And since then, we have full support for this work at the highest level of the foundation and that, that's just really helpful for us because this means we can focus more of our energy uh, to the outside world and conversations and engagement with you and that's just really has been very, very great. One more thing about the Open Society Foundations, what I also very much appreciated working for the foundation is that I believe, at least so far, we have been immune to corporate influence. And that is very, very important if you work in this space. I never, ever had to deal with it. If we were approached by other foundations, our leadership probably sent them back home. I never had to deal with it, and I'm just really grateful for that as well, in particular because I know it's not the standard and norm in the private foundation world. I think one of the big failures um, is actually that we have not convinced more foundations to join this important fight. And Joe had the slide up. We have not any to be able to convince new ones, but actually we have lost some very three important ones with you know, big vision and, uh, and big money. And I think that's a problem. Why have we not been able to convince other new foundations uh, to join? As I see it, it's mainly two reasons. Um, a lot of these foundations, and I'm here talking more, mainly about U.S. and European-based uh, private foundations, operate in a human rights framework. And uh, it's not easy, it seems, may seem weird to you, but it's not, not easy to argue for A to K in a human rights uh, framework. And we have struggled with that a lot internally, mm -hmm. because often, especially in the UN, U.S. context, human rights means political human rights, so free expression, privacy. When you look at copyright, copyright enforcement obviously touches on that one, but access to education is in that narrow interpretation of uh, human rights, political human rights, a different story. The second, probably most important reason why we haven't been able to broaden support for the, from the foundation community, I think, is to do with the fact that it's a very con contentious issue still, and I think Joe Kurgan has also referenced that point. Uh, I think, um, as we saw, I think the first presentation, presentation of the day 
showed how the political parties and the political sort of debate in the US may be slightly changing around these issues. And I think once that happened, we have a better chance to get other foundations in, on board. But again, otherwise, you know, um, until that mainstream, uh, until our conversations do not become mainstream, it will be hard to convince uh, some of the other foundations, I think, to come on board. But enough of about, about OSF and enough about the foundation world. I think it's really all um, the ideas, the passion, uh, the vision uh, and commitment that all of you bring to this cause, and that is really the reason why we are here today. Um, and I think it's um, time also uh, to sort of look back, as we said, celebrate, and uh, one of, I think, the important um, milestones, if not tipping points in this movement, I think is, has, have been, has been this last year, has been Sopa Pipa, has been ACTA, and that has been talked about in the previous panel. I just want to say something very quickly about it. Why I think it was a mind, milestone is not so much because we defeated uh, uh, ACTA itself or the ideas in ACTA. We have not defeated those ideas. For example, if you remember, Article 27 in ACTA talks about privatized law enforcement. And that idea is very much al uh, alive and well and being sort of advanced throughout the world. But why I think ACTA has been important is because uh, I think at least starting in the European and possibly US context, it will be harder going forward for elected policymakers to ignore us. And that means power. And that's the power we should use going forward. That's the power all of us can use, and I think that's really what matters. And I think another interesting dimension is that this power, I see it also sort of cross-fertilizing across the world, and how movements, you know, what happens in the US help the Europe, and what ha happens in Europe in terms of this political mobilization can help other parts of the world. So besides all the conversations we have about the very technical issues of copyright, uh, I think this element of political mobilization is for me as important, if, if not more important, because it's the only way to actually bring about that paradigm shift. Um, I have a map, and I really just spent um, uh, one minute on it, and I'm happy to post it then on the website. This is basically an issue map about the ACTA campaign. Uh, I've been working with uh, researchers from Science Po, uh, Goldsmith College, and University of Amsterdam. It's basically mapping the ACTA space, the campaign around ACTA, and what it does is it's, it's, it's analysis of the web space, of sort of how websites link to each other. And uh, it's done through a co-link analysis, and uh, so what you, you can see a couple of very big dots on that map. The bigger the dot, the more incoming links this website has from the network. That's how it works. So we see uh, twi uh, sorry, Twitter as a very important, YouTube and uh, Facebook are smaller further down, and that very much tells us that, for example, this was definitely a campaign fought over Twitter. Uh, we see uh, Michael Geist, if you scroll down a little bit, uh, quite centrally, out of a direction, yeah. There's the Open Rights Group, La Prodature de Net, KI Online, the Michael Geist at the center, which basically means that more link, people link to Michael Geist than to anyone else. Anyhow, there's much more to be said about that, Matt. I will post it on the Congress website. I will also post an email address of the researchers who are working on this. They have now moved on to cover Wicked and the ITU, and they expressly told me they really wish your comments, questions, and feedback so they can continue to analyze what they call the sociology of this movement and of the web. Thank you. Um, moving on very quickly. Um, I think besides ACTA, so that is certainly one highlight, uh, but we've seen many other, I think, positive changes, and many of them have been referenced here in this worm in the, in the previous presentation. Um, I think it's, you know, actual law reforms of national copyright, be that in Canada, in India, hopefully here in Brazil, actually, so fingers crossed for the process here in Brazil, but also important court cases. Again, Canada is here leading the way. But I think also important reports that are coming out of the political sort of mainstream spectrum. Um, this first speaker in the day mentioned the Republican Study Committee's report. 
you, uh, in the UK we had a Hargreaves review, so there is, I think, a lot of positive change. Also, for me, one of the most important ones is language in all of this, because I think language um, shapes or dictates very much how we think about things. So, um, the Canadian court case has actually mentioned user rights in the decision, and I think that is a very important development, and I think it's also our responsibility to much more uh, sort of claim the language and use our language as we fight this campaign. Observing again over these past 10 years what has happened, I think it's, it's not a revolution we're seeing that's happening. I think it's much, much more evolutionary that uh, what is happening here. But I think, um, as somebody also said earlier, um, given it's sort of a cumulative effort and sort of um, different pieces of uh, change adding up, I think that is the reason why everything you do in the very different corners of the world is so incredibly important. Uh, two more points. Uh, one, um, I think, what are some of the important issues for looking ahead? One of, I think, um, uh, the biggest worries, I think, is that we have been quite um, sort of focus on the issue, at least in the copyright space, flexibilities or user rights. And we have, I think, thus ignored a little bit the whole idea of contracts and how contracts increasingly overrule these user rights or copyright flexibilities. Uh, I thank Neva because she has talked ab about that a little bit earlier on. And, for example, the Commissioner for Internal Market uh, in Europe has recently proposed to launch an initiative on licensing Europe. You know, that means very much, you know, proposing a world of licensed knowledge. So there is, for example, a conversation of data mining, which we think is an important user right and flexibility. You know, but there is a proposition that that use should actually be licensed. Well, is this something we would agree with or do we want to uh, push back on that? And I think there are some very strong reasons, obviously, to push back. One is cost. I mean, a license mostly, you know, it comes, comes with costs associated that you need to pay for that use. But also it's a question of freedom, right? Because if you operate in a world of licensed knowledge, you are not setting the terms for this use. It's the others. It's the, those who license you the knowledge that set the terms. And I think there are big important questions of freedom at stake. Besides these issues, I think we need to also look at sort of the bigger structural challenges and problems. So I've been at the recent workshop organized by IFLA, the International Federation of Libraries Associations. And it was a, was a workshop where we we're talking about e-books and the future of the public library. And believe me, it was a very difficult, depressing conversation. Um, because basically, you know, there is one scenario that we're sort of confronted with is that Amazon or Amazon, using Amazon as a symbol, is replacing the public library. And again, is this a world that we're comfortable living in or not? So I really think it's important that besides focusing on the reform of copyright law and limitation exceptions in particular, we look at these bigger structural problems. And that means, I think, looking outside copyright law. That means looking to consumer protection law, to contract law, to competition law. And I think this is really, for the access to knowledge community, a very, very important task that we need to, I think, do much more work on in the future. Uh, I also must admit, you know, that I wake up on certain days and, and uh, given the fight, I think is really, really difficult. As you are all aware, our opponents are so incredibly powerful. And I wake up and say, well, you know, there will be these people who have the fancy devices and are happy to pay and trade convenience for freedom. And the others will pirate stuff. People are resourceful. They, you know, they want the knowledge. They will get the knowledge and they get it currently. If no legal channels are available, they get it through illegal channels. So I'm like, you know, maybe that's the way to solve the problem because, you know, piracy will solve it for, for us. Well, then I say maybe <laughs> there is another way to do this and particularly from an Open Society Foundation's perspective, of course, I would argue that, that the rule of law has a role to play in this world. And uh, the problem currently is, as we know, that there is a big 
uh, uh, sort of the, the, the law and the social norm is out of sync. So I think we still have this important uh, responsibility to bring it back in, in sync and that very much means, I think for me at least, to sort of reform the law to better support that social practice. Last point, I want to talk very briefly about the Treaty for the Visually Impaired. Uh, Jamie mentioned that it's being negotiated at WIPO. Uh, it's a project that's very, very dear to my heart. I think several of you have been uh, there in 2009 when we first drafted the text of this treaty together with the World Blind Union. And I also want to use this opportunity to thank the Brazilian government for their just brilliant, enormous leadership on this uh, initiative, on this treaty, uh, International Copyright Treaty for the Visually Impaired. Since the first day, they have been there, they've worked with us, and they have taken leadership and presented this at WIPO. So thanks a lot, but also thanks a lot to all the other countries in the South that by now are all supporting uh, this treaty. Um, Latin American, African and Asian group of Bible, they're all supportive. And I think it's clear that they are actually the real visionaries here in this case. And I want to just express my gratitude for that. Um, talking about the UN US, it's a very different story. I think these two blocks have been very obstructive all throughout the process. Being a European uh, is very embarrassing at this moment because what we hear is that it's unclear whether on Monday there will be any sort of progress, Monday is actually a very important, it's decision time, it's a make or break point for this treaty. So on Monday, which means in two days, the WIPO delegates will have to decide whether to call for the diplomatic conference on this treaty or not. And um, I will just hope and call on the EU and US to stop discriminating the visually impaired when they ask for access to knowledge and actually they ask just something all of us, the sighted people, enjoy, which is just full access to the knowledge um, in, 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 on, in, on these brilliant networks. Um, so I hope they sort of will, you know, listen to the blind community and just come around and, and give them what they, I think, uh, very well, definitely deserve. That's all. I want to uh, thank you very much. I want to thank, of course, also the organizers, but thank all, uh, also all of you uh, for all uh, the inspiration and also for your patience when explaining you know things to me and it's just been such an extraordinary pleasure to to work with you and i think we have many years ahead in this fight thank you